Hello everybody, it's me Ross and welcome back to another edition of the Meet the Opposition. Today I'm joined by Chris from the Pie at Night podcast covering all things Wigan Athletic ahead of the Blues trip to the DW Stadium. Chris, this was going to be dubbed as the Paul cook Liam Richardson derby, but the obvious reason it won't be that because Paul Cook has been sacked. So it'll be yeah. John McGrill versus Liam Richardson. Um, Wigan, what season for you guys it's been this season under Liam Richardson? Joint top of the league, your assessment of the season, and welcome to the show. Hi, uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Um, beyond expectations, to be honest. I think, bearing in mind the fact that we finished last season barely avoiding relegation, went into a summer with only four or five full, fully signed players, a complete rebuilding job on Liam Richardson's hands, which he's done admirably. Um recruitment side has been fantastic over the summer and it was more of a case of getting the team to bed in and gel and, and foster that team spirit and he's done brilliantly with that absolutely brilliant and um i think yeah beyond beyond most expectations didn't push it pushing sort of pushing for playoffs would have been a, a nice to have but to be joint top goal difference with the game in hand at this stage going into going into christmas never expected that at all yeah, I was looking at a stat, you know, yesterday that, you know, because you guys scored a late winner against Shrewsbury in like the 92nd third minute, whatever mm. it was, um, and you nearly got as ma- the same amount of points as you did last season, and it's only halfway through. So mm. um, what has Liam Richardson changed? Of course, you made some good signings in the summer. Um, of course, unfortunate Charlie White, you know, of course, what's happened with him. But you've got some other great players in there, you know, Max Power, Will Keane, of course, formerly of town. Gwion Edwards, of course, signed for you as well. How has Will Keane and Gwion Edwards done this season so far? Uh, Edwards has been in and out. Um, he's looked sort of decent, decent-ish when he's played. One criticism I have was sort of no real end product. There's been a few times he's he's blasted it towards goal when he could have placed it or he could have squared it to someone in open space. I think I, I don't know whether it was him or Jordan Jones very early on in the season when White was struggling for goals, went through and could have quite easily skirt, squared it for White to have a tap in, and, and White went another five or six, seven games without scoring, whereas if he'd have got that one, that could have been him off on a run. Uh, he came on last night, Edwards, and, and looked decent, sort of, last 10, 15 minutes, playing on the on the left-hand side, but that would be my one criticism of him. No no killer pass, no nothing nothing really end product-wise. Uh, Keen, again, he's, everything that we've done that's been good has gone through him. I think, I can't remember exactly, I think it's 14 goal involvements that's either a goal himself or an assist so far this season he's ended up getting a call up to the republic of ireland squad and ended up and, that, and that's been another thing he, he's been one of those we've had a sort of a long-running joke here that we're going to uh, be a bit of a rest respite home for broken footballers we had the likes of emileski that ended up getting more england caps when he featured in an england shirt chris kirkland that hadn't played for a few years at the back in the premier league days obviously ended up getting recalled back into international squads and then um, the likes of Nick Nick Powell ended up back at Wigan and not only not only finding form these sorts of players were they struggled with injuries for a long time and then we somehow managed to get them fit and playing regularly Will Keane's one of those he's been in and out of teams he's had injuries on and off over time he seems to be maintaining a good level of fitness and form and playing well and it's it's I'm not saying it's a, a Wigan thing, but it's noticeable. And uh, yeah, everything that we do tends good tends to tends to go through him. He just he just um, links it all together, knits it all together. Never looks phased. Always cool head on the ball. And um, I think to some extent he could probably play a level above, given given the chance. And it'd be interesting to see if we do go up. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not saying anything too early, but if he if we do go up and he stays on. How, how he furs next season at championship level because he's one of those players where ball at his feet he can pick a pass never under any pressure never seems to lose it just silky sort of um what should we say like a league one berbatov okay <laughs> yeah i think um i think when we we had him i think we a lot of town fans disappointed to see him go i think unfortunately yeah. he had a lot of injury problems while he was here but when he did play he yeah, did yeah. score goals and create chances. Um, has he still got the ponytails? He's still rocking that. Yeah, still rocking a yeah. ponytail. Yeah, of course he is. Of course <laughs> he is. Um, let's talk about the Wigan team then and how Liam Richardson, you know, lines up his side. Down below is what you think could happen. Um, ben Amos, of course, was a, a goalkeeper that was linked to town as well, but of course Wigan signed him. Um, yeah. 
talk about some of the players in there and um, how it sort of lines up. 4-2-3-1, that is Paul Cook's favourite formation as well. Um, and it seems like Leo Richardson's gone down that route as well. Yeah, similar sort of thing. Two sort of holding midfielders in front of the back four. Um can be an issue at times because they can be right on the centre half's toes and you can have this massive void in the middle of the pitch between them two and Keane, who is effectively the one off, off the back of the front man, and there can be a massive gap there. However, um it, it is the way he tends to set up. The the two that are on the screen there, Naylor and Power, Power will probably be back in because he was suspended for last night and Cousins was back from injury and played last night and then sort of limped off just before half time. Now, I think that was probably too much too soon. I think he played in the cup game the other night and perhaps shouldn't have started last night. And and perhaps had power not been suspended for last night, Cousins wouldn't have started. The other thing I would say is when Naylor and Power tend to play together, they're not necessarily square on. Power tends to be the one that will actually pick up a ball and carry it and drive forward and, and look to play forward. And I like that out of him. Um, earlier on the season, he was playing right back quite a bit. And... We scored quite a few goals from his delivery from the right hand side, White, White and Keane in particular. Um, and we miss that to some extent when he doesn't play wide, but he, he is more effective in driving us through the middle of the pitch. Um, Massey played last night. He He's one of these that divides opinion amongst a lot of Wigan fans. When he's on his game, he's really good. He's scored goals away at places like Ellen Road and, and what have you. When, we, when we've played higher up the leagues and he can't do it, um, he seems to have lost a little bit of pace and um, perhaps a little bit of confidence. So he played wide right. Him and Derek were right back linked up quite well last night. Um, Lang is being played through the middle at the minute because of the injury to Wyke, whereas Lang was playing out wide of a front three, effectively. Um, pardon me. And sort of that takes a bit of, of edge off. Lang's game. Lang's game is getting a ball on the half turn and running at people. And he's done really well at that this season. Playing as an out and out front man, um, it sort of took the edge off him. And the other thing I would say is obviously um Charlie White was a big target man and we were quite often played back to front. Not necessarily long ball, but let's get it forward and get him play off him. And um some of the times last night in particular, we were doing that and the ball wasn't sticking up there with Lang and he was getting a bit bullied by the two centre-halves and not liking it. And I, and I get that, I get that because it's not his game. So it'd be interesting to see how that pans out long-term. But yeah. Okay, and, think, um, I, no, carry on. Sorry. No, no, I was going <laughs> to say, and the only other one that's up there is, is Bennett at left-back. And again... Um, Sign him, sign him sort of tail end of the window and he was injured and he's only just got fit and started playing, played in the cup game, played again last night, went off went off on about 75, 80, 75, 80 minutes last night and we moved McLean to left back and that was when Gwian Edwards came on at left hand side, left hand, left wing. Whether he'll play again on Saturday or whether he'll mix it up, I don't know. It's interesting because he might put Derrick back to left back, he might put Power in at right back, depending on what the midfield options are. It's it's hard to second guess him, but the formation particularly and generally the back four, he doesn't tend to tinker that much if he can avoid it. Okay, interesting. Um, and of course, let's talk about the game itself. Um, what games do you reckon we should expect from Liam Richardson's side? Of course, it was going to be, as I said, the battle of Paul Cook and Liam Richardson, the battle mm. of who will outmaneuver each other. But um, of course, it's going to be a bit different now because John McGrill's in charge. It's still going to be the same sort of town team because... Well, they're still the same players there. Sam Moore still yeah. will be returning. Lee Evans will be returning. Um, yeah. What sort of game can we expect? You know, we can. It seems you're defensively sound. You, you don't see many goals, but you do score goals. Yeah, and and that's it. We are defensively sound, and I think a lot of it is we've scored quite a few early goals in games, and we also scored a lot of late goals, a lot of late winners. So I suppose it's that goals change games. If we score early on, it changes the complexion of our team's attacking or what have you. Um, we play a lot better away from home than we do at home. I don't know whether that's because we're... I wouldn't say we're a counter-attacking team, but certainly we play better counter-attacking. Like I said, with with the likes of Lang on the right wing and McLean on the left and the pace going forward. McKean, uh, Will, Will Keane's not exactly slow and uh, can look to play a pass. Um, but we we've... And that, this is something going back years, historically struggling to break teams down at home. It's, it's not easy. The, the thing with the 
lining up against the Cooks Ips, which would have been interesting to see effectively what might have been two separate teams playing the same system, the same formation, and um <laughs> pardon me, apprentice versus master and seeing seeing who comes out on top. They could have effectively nullified each other and it could have been quite boring. Or it could have been quite open and <laughs> and we might have might have had a, a fun end to end game. What's um what's your prediction then? What do you reckon? Are, are you, is Liam Richardson gonna beat the Ipswich Sound side, or do you think it will be a tight game, even though Paul Cook's not in charge? It's hard to say. It's hard to say. I think we've certainly got goals in us. Um Ipswich, from from an outsider looking in, were seemingly on the up a little bit, struggled early on and and seemed to have found a little bit of form, climbed the table a little bit. The the Cook sacking was a bit of a shock, certainly from our point of view, because he was seemingly doing okay. Um, some of the criticisms I've seen levelled at him from Ipswich fans are parallels to his time here at Wigan. Uh, no plan B, rigid and quite uh, obstinate in his in his formation. And not only that, seems to have favourites and play the same plays, whether they're in form or out of form or what have you. And, and very rarely mixes it up without sort of having his hand forced. The differences between him and Richardson, I would say Richardson seems to be learning that, like, yeah, to some extent, pick the same team, pick your form and play to a certain formation. But if it's not working, change it. And he seems to change it a lot quicker. Um, quick example last night, Cousins went off our time injured and he was a, a sitting midfielder alongside Naylor. There was two of them in there and he sort of flipped it. And uh, Asgard got brought on. And he, and he flipped the triangle in that Asgard went upside along Keane and Naylor just sat on his own. And I think he part of it will obviously be that Shrewsbury were 11 men behind the ball and we needed to be further up the pitch and have that extra man in there to look for the, to create the opening. Um, but I think a lot of the time, particularly under Cook, it was Evans and Morsi and it would still be the two of them in there. And, and we still have two holding midfielders even when a team isn't, isn't attacking us and there's, there's no real... From an outsider looking in, there's no real need for us to have two holding midfielders at all. So, yeah, I'll see. I don't know. Uh, I think it'll be tight. It depends. We, if we get in a groove, we can score goals. We've done it a few times. It's, I think it's a bit attritional at the minute. White, white going is a big loss because obviously the, the, the forward part of it played off him. So, I think that they're still getting used to him not being there as a focal point. And he did a lot of work off the ball, a lot of pressing, a lot of just bullying centre house and creating space for other midfielders. Wyke hasn't got the goals that he's got previously at Sunderland. And a lot of Sunderland fans have said, oh, he's passed it and he's not good enough without McGeady's delivery. But from seeing him close up, he's Keane's profited from it. Keane scored a bag's goals because Charlie Wyke's making space for him and, and defenders are more, more um bothered about was what's Wyke up to, what's he doing? And Keane's picking up those pocket spaces because of his intelligence. Keane's a clever player that he'll just drop off half a yard and the ball will land at his feet 10 or 15 yards out rather than being right in the six yard box because Wyke's moving everybody around. So yeah, I think if we click we'll score goals. The other thing is it's new new manager bounce for you, whether mm. <laughs> They seemingly hadn't stopped playing for Cook. It's not like they were, there was a mutiny on his hands and they weren't playing for him. Just, I don't know. Cook, Cook sort of took a little while to get going with us. It takes time. You get new players in and he builds his own team. It takes time to get, uh, particularly on the training ground, if it's new formations and this, that and the other. Morsi and Evans would have been a big help in that, in that they played for him God knows how many games under him at Wigan. But uh, seemingly, it was just about getting there. But again, get a good result and then a couple of bad ones. Ultimately, someone somewhere is going to pull the trigger eventually, whether they, whether they uh, believe in him or not. To some extent, they might uh, decide that a change is necessary. What do you think of McGreal? Because he's been caretaker manager before, so you've got an idea of how he'll set up and how he'll play or not. Does it depend on how he's assessed the personnel you've got now? Well, you know, before the Charlton game, of course, he only had two hours on the training ground to get to know the players and, um, mm. you know, he was never going to change the formation. And, of course, Charlton, <laughs> less said that, the better, really. That was not a good evening. Mm. And um, I'm fearing going to Wigan, really. I'm, I'm fearing Will Keane, to be honest. I think he's probably <laughs> going to score. That is my prediction he's going to score. Um, we don't know yet who will be the next manager. Uh, John McGreal will definitely be on charge on Saturday. 
Mm. Um, but he's only going to do what he can with his, the team we've got in front of us. I don't know. He may change a few players after the defeat on Tuesday, but we'll have to wait and see, really. It's it's just one of those games that, you know, I was looking forward to. I was looking forward to Wigan game. Paul Cook, Liam Richardson, as you said, the apprentice mm. first, the, the master, but we haven't got it because he's gone. But um, it should be interesting. And the, the final thing really to say, really, with you, Chris, is what can away fans expect at a DW? There'll be a few who are going to the DW probably for the first time, but there'll be some who are going back again. Has there been any changes? What can we expect? Any away day pubs they can go to? Anything we um, look to? If, if they're coming up on the train, there's um, a couple of decent pubs in town that will quite happily accept away fans. There's right out over the road from the two, there's two train stations at Wigan. They'll probably come into North Western because that's West Coast Main Line. There's one opposite called Swan and Railway that's out of refurb that's decent. If you turn left out of the train station, just go down and left again under the railway arches, there's a place they're called Wigan Central that's fitted out like a train station. <laughs> so it sounds a bit cheesy, but it's it's nice because it's under the railway arches and they, they it's like a craft ale pub. There's decent in there. If they're coming up to the ground, there's a big pub called uh, the Red Robin just over the over the opposite the cinema where the stadium is and they, they'll always have away fans in we wigan's always got voted quite a few times premier league days as like sort of a way day of the season mainly because massive big 5400 capacity away end and a lot of those big premier league clubs a lot of those fans wouldn't have managed to get tickets but also um quite welcoming we've only really had trouble i would say in wigan was liverpool fans and it was a liverpool three o'clock kickoff and we all went uptown into the pub and Man United was on the telly at half five and they were all kicking off because it was Man United on the telly. But generally, it, it, decent place to come. Fans like it for a weekend away. It's a long way to come and go back on a Saturday. I know that much. Definitely. But um, we'll, we'll see what happens then, Chris. Uh, thank you very much for joining me. Anything else you'd like to add before we wrap up? No, thanks for having me. I, I, hope, you, uh, I hope you do well. There's... there's Cook getting sacked brought out a lot of sort of animosity amongst Wigan fans, and and I, I sort of understood where the animosity was coming from. They sort of felt like he quit when we were in our hour of need, and Richardson stayed on. There was talk of, um, pardon me, he fell out with the administrators. The minute we went into administration, they were trying to sell Keith Moore when we had a, a game that was potentially going to keep us up on the against Fulham on the Tuesday night. And they were trying to sell him on the Monday and they hadn't even spoke to Cook about it. So I understand where he got his anger from. Apparently, he walked away without a payoff. And there's all sorts of other bits and pieces. He gave us a lot of happy memories and we played some very good football under him. The team that he built, if we hadn't gone into administration, I think could have had a real good tilt to championship promotion out the promotion promotion out the championship the following season if we'd have managed to keep hold of them but I, I i hold him in in high regard he's a wigger manager he gave us a league title you can't take that away from him he'll, he'll always be on the uh the honors board for that but yeah he might turn up saturday he has been to Wigan games in the yeah. past and in uh do I suppose it depends on what time Liverpool kick off or where they are? Because if he's <laughs> in, in his Wigan days, if he wasn't at Wigan, he'd be watching Liverpool wherever that was. He um, he likes to do away days with Jamie Carragher. <laughs> so when, are... when, when Carragher's not on Sky, <laughs> well, I've, I've just looked up quickly and they're playing Aston Villa. Of course, uh, Steven Gerrard's return to Liverpool, so oh, and that's at three. Yeah. That's three p.m. as well. So yeah, well, uh, he'll probably yeah, be there. Yeah. Then. He'll probably be there then. With these, uh, with these notifications on his phone for the Latix Ipswich game. <laughs> definitely, definitely indeed. But um, right. Chris, pleasure to have you, my friend, on the show. No um, hopefully, everybody, let us know in the comments down below your thoughts going into this game, your predictions, and let me know if you're going to the Wigan game as well. Um, well, there we go. Thanks for watching. Thank you very much. Bye-bye for now.